Hey guys, now this is going to be a quick sh uh, showing you how I use True Oil for finishing a guitar. As you can see, this is my setup um, for oiling. I couldn't really spray this guitar because I don't have the equipment to do it. So thanks to some advice from the Lefia who helped me make the body and forum members that I am a part of, they recommended the True Oil. I'm quite glad they did. It's really a lovely thing. Now, there's so much information on the net saying how you should do this. Honestly, there is no right or wrong answer for doing True Oil. Um, basically, read all the information you get and just find the technique that works well for you. It's very dependent on the wood and your finishing of the guitar of what you need to do. Now I'm going to run you past quickly what I did so maybe this will help you out when you come to do yours. It is really really foolproof but there is a couple of tricks that I have learned on doing the back that I will share and hopefully it will make your job a little bit easier because I went to this pretty much blind other than the advice on the that I got. So I didn't really know, so I just basically winged it and then did, the, did some adjustments to work with my thing. Now, I'm going to run you through what I use, and yes it looks like a lot, and there's a couple of optional steps here, so don't worry guys. Now, you'll, the most important thing is that you'll need something to spread true oil on. And on top left hand corner here, you'll see I've got coffee filters and also gun cleaning swabs. Um, most people use a worn out t-shirt, unfortunately I did not have that, so uh, basically I got the swabs when I picked up the true oil from a local gun shop. Um, works really well, um, I have no complaints, but the other techniques are using your fingers, which also works quite well, especially for the fiddly little bits like the horn and any internal little holes you've got to put the stuff into, um, but I find the with the fingers and the coffee filters I have a lot of drips on to the sides of the guitar because it the spreads the oil along, it doesn't soak up any of the oil. So I use a mixture of coffee filters and the swabs, guns clean swabs because basically I find it gives me a little bit more control. Now, other things you'll need is synthetic or real steel wool. Um, I use 4-0 grade. Um, a tack cloth to get rid of anything when you do scrub it off and also you'll see the true oil and also the sealer filler. Now I use sealer and filler on this one, um, you don't need to do that, that one's an optional thing as well and all depends on the wood, okay, if you've got a really big pour of your wood and you want a smooth finish then use the sealer. If you want an open pour finish then you use the true oil and you'll be fine, but again, dependent on the type of wood. Now I'm using Karina, or black, oh sorry, white limber on this bull, so pores are quite small. Um, also I've got some handy towels, and you see why I'm, when I show you why I do that. It's an old technique I stole from my grandfather, but he was using Danish oil, so it's not so important, but I like using it as well, because it just gives it a little bit more thinner, smoother finish. And also I've got some disposable rubber gloves or latex gloves because um, this white creamer or, uh, is basically very light and I've got very oily hands so basically any sweat or oil from my hands stains the wood so that's why I use the gloves. Those are optional, um, a lot of people don't use them because I don't have any problems at all. There is a thing on the internet that you've got to be careful with it but I've never had any reaction to it, so I'm pretty good. Now, again, this is just what I do. Don't take it as gospel. You just need to play with the stuff. It is really, really easy stuff to use. And just work with this technique or work with the techniques you find on the internet and just find what's best for you guys. Um, again, this is just what, how I do it and I've, can, you can see that the finish is pretty good. Now, that's only two coats on the back. I've done the back and sides, and I've first up I basically did the back and sides together, and I probably did a little bit too much at one time because I had nothing to hold on to it. I tried using a coating to put through the holes. Unfortunately, Karina is really soft, so um, it dinked up the holes for the neck bolt. So I stopped doing that and just uh, slowed down a little bit.
Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see what we do. Um, I'll talk you through basically how I do it. Now, if you go use a sealer, it's pretty much the same technique as true oil. Um, so don't worry, I'm only going to show the true oil on this one because it's already been sealed. And basically, uh, it's been buffed back to the wood, but not so deep that you empty the grains of the filler. Um, again, many different techniques of using the sealer, but this is it. it's how I did it. So, and results are pretty good. Anyway, I'll zoom in now and I'll I can show you what the wood looks like and then I'll put in the coat on there as well and just show how I did it. Uh, hopefully this helps guys, again, this is not gospel, okay? This is just how I do it. Okay, welcome back guys. So here we go. This is the guitar body. Now this has been done with two coats of true oil. Now you can see it's a beautiful piece of wood. Now it's quite this one's quite easy because the wood was a little bit softer so major thing I find with true oil is that you need to make sure the prep is done right um, basically true oil is only going to enhance the grain of the wood now for me I started with a pre-cut template from a local luthier which I'll see if he will, will let me put his name at the end of the thing if you want him to get in touch with him and Basically, it was cut nicely, but needed a very good sand. Um, I started with a 120 because there was no uh, paint on this one. If you have paint, you may want to start a little bit coarser just to strip off the paint. But I started at 120 and worked up 240 all the way up to 600. Now, you can see here, this is 600. It is pretty much fine, fine, fine sandpaper. Um, and you want to make sure that any scratches or any blemishes and it is as smooth as possible because when you put the true oil on there it will show any little string, strings or uh, sorry scratches or dings or anything like that there is a small ding there um, which came through shipping when I got back from New Zealand to, to Australia and there's a little bit of knottiness on the wood but I actually quite like that it gives it a bit of texture and looks now prep is the key Take your time. I basically spent three days just slowly sanding this back with an orbital sander, put a sheet, and just slowly do it. Now, one thing when you go that fine, the dust, the sanding dust will fill in the pores a little bit. So, what I did is I blew this out with a air compressor and took it right back. Now, it is ready to go. You can see here. This is what it looks like without the true oil. And this is looks what it looks like after two coats. Um, basically, with true oil, the best advice I can do, give you is board it up slowly, and it will get darker and darker as you put more and more coats on. The first coat does look a little bit light, but the second coat I'm quite happy with. There's so much on the net about how many coats you need to put on a guitar. Honestly, I can't give you any help on this one, guys. Just do what you want to and look at the finish. If it looks good, um, stop there. If it, you want it a bit darker, keep going. Or if you want it a bit thicker, just put on another coat. And it's just basically a really slow process of basically building up the finish, okay? It is really simple. Now, I'm going to pause again. I'm going to go suit up for this because, as I said, it's not a necessary step, but I use um, latex gloves because my hands are really oily and basically um, I have actually stained the wood with a bit of sweat and oil off my hands so I've had to rub it back so I use a bit of rubber gloves so again I'll put you on hold while I get that ready because you really don't need to know how to put a rubber gloves on okay guys now gloves are on um, yeah not the best look but I just find it makes it clean up really easy now major thing with true oil is once you put it on it, it reacts with the air so you've got to be quick and precise on how you do it that's the only thing i can do to you, for you okay for, give to you guys make sure that you are prepped and ready to use because uh, once it goes on um especially the sealer stage it takes up really quickly and gets sticky really quickly and you don't have a time to use it true oil is a little bit more forgiving um it does give you a little bit of time to play around with a with the coat. Uh, now, you may be wondering why I have the towels. 
this is an old technique I found I can remember my grandfather using when he was making furniture um, as a hobby and he used Danish oil. Now with Danish oil you basically pour it on and let it pull then you wipe off the excess. Not so needed for uh, true oil because it is a totally different thing but I do use it to um, basically take out any excess that I'd use and it does give a nice uh, finish to it I think than just letting it sit and dry especially when you go do the scuffing up stage. Now what I've done is I've just got uh, two pieces of kitchen towel. Um, you can use shop towels if they're available. Um, I just use these ones because they're, they're cheaper. Grab a bit of the synthetic steel wool or a piece of cardboard, either way it works. What you want to do is just throw it in the middle of the paper towel, fold it over. Now that will give you four sides. One, two, then fold it over size and that gives you another two. So you get basically four um, costs of that. So that makes it really cost efficient as well. Now basically if you're doing any sanding or anything like that before you true oil the body make sure you get rid of any excess sanding or dust. Now um, I've seen people use vacuum cleaners, I've seen people use compressed air and I just picked up a one dollar tack cloth from the local hardware store. Um, basically yeah, just give it a wipe over and be careful this stuff is really uh, tacky so just get on your gloves a little bit so you don't want that on the flush at the end. Give it a wipe over, um, make sure you get all the um, dust and stuff off the thing. Dust is another one you don't want in there. Um, and basically yeah, give it a good shake. Um, this one's been pretty pretty prepared so it's not going to be as bad. Now get everything you need ready to go. Now I grab a wad of the clean swabs. Now I don't use all those, I just use probably two or three. In this case I'll probably use three just to be safer. And again I use the coffee filters as well so I'll keep one of those on hand just in case. Now again so many different techniques I've seen on internet. This is how I do it. A lot of people pour true oil straight onto the wood. Now make sure I've got the true oil, not the sealer. It definitely looks like true oil. Um, and then they wipe it on. Um, God love childproof caps. Now, one little hint is this stuff does um, oxidize with air. So when you're doing it, don't um, take the whole seal off because you don't want as much air in there as possible. I just use a pen or a little craft like this to make a little hole. Now, put a little bit, not too much, on there, and I usually just wipe off the excess, because I usually keep the bottles upside down to stop, to make the skim on the top. Now, with the things, when I'm doing accurate things, I just make it into a ball, so the uh, oil is at the top like that. Now. This is how I do it. Now I always start at the edge because I have a nasty habit of not oiling the edges properly. So just keep this, what I do is just run around the outside and you can also see the differences here. I might have to zoom in a little bit for you between the true oil and the wood. And it's also starting to show some really nice um, graining now. So I'm trying to keep my shadow out of here. So you can see that's before the true oil and that's the after. So yeah, it, you can even see just here before it's even half done how much true oil does make this grain pot. Now as I said, if you've got any scratches or any um, rough parts where you haven't sanded properly, it's gonna show, okay guys. Um, one good thing is when I use a sealer, it is, it showed me a couple of bits that I missed and I just went over them again with the sandpaper. So anyway, getting back to things, because you do have to work a little bit quickly with this stuff. Um, I rub over the edges. Now, the reason why I'm using the uh, gun swabs on this one is because it doesn't drip over the sides, like your fingers, because all you're doing with the fingers is you're just pushing it around, and it doesn't, um, it, the excess is soaked up by the cotton a little bit. A um, little bit more true oil, because this is the first coat, um, and it, the first coat always sucks up a lot more true oil than the second coats. So yeah, just rubbing the edges now. Um, I haven't done the top of the guitar before, so I'm just gonna run around the edges of the pickup cavities and the control cavities, just so 
do it. Now, this is my technique. As I said, I have a nasty habit of not doing the edges properly. So I always run around the edges just to give it that first coat of it. So there, then basically you're doing the whole thing for the body. Now, I'm going to swap over to the coffee filters just to show you can do it with coffee filters. Um, I usually don't use the coffee filters unless I'm doing a big area because coffee filters do not soak up the oil. As you can see here, it's just sitting on top of the coffee filter. Um, I fold it over and just basically go to town. Now, the correct technique is to go with the grain. Um, if you don't know what the grain, going with the grain is, well, basically look at the guitar. If you see the grain on this one, you can see it running up and down that way. That is with the grain. When you're sanding, it's much more important because um, that will give you the smoothest finish you can do. So you can see here the coffee filters is working, um, and it's perfectly fine. But I, prefer, as in, I come to like these a lot more for the true oil. For the sealer, uh, because it ticks up a lot quicker, I actually prefer the coffee filters for the sealer. So again, I'm just going with the, the wood, um, rubbing up and down, and pretty much there it is coated. Now, I'll probably, once the, the camera's off, I'll probably go and do the the cavities for the pickups in there, there, but just wanted to give you the basic technique of doing this. So yeah, I'm just rubbing it. Now it's starting to, to t stick up a little bit now and take up. So I just want to be quiet for a moment and just make sure I've got a good coating of that trawl over the guitar. Um, nice and even as possible. And try not, when you're doing around the edges, um, not to make it drip over, because you'll get like drip lines. But you can see that that is looking really nice. And that's only the first coat. It's just going to get slightly darker every time you do it and slightly thicker every time you do it. So, yep, that is looking really good. Um, just making sure that I haven't missed any spots. You can usually see a little bit of dryness. And I usually just give it a little bit of rub around here with the holes for the uh, strings and the plate for the bridge pickup, sorry, I'm trying to remember here. Easy when I'm trying to plan to make this, make sure everything is done. Now, be careful of true oil. I have never had it, but I have read somewhere that it can light up um, when it oxidizes itself. So, get rid of it or keep an eye on it for until a little while. Never had it happen, but again, um, yeah, be careful. It's definitely a thing. When I store tr the true oil for the next coat, upside down, so the part which is area, area is up there and it has a, the skimming effect on top. Now, time for the paper towel trick. Again, I don't think this is really needed, but this is something I use just to make sure that I haven't pulled up anything. Make it into a nice edge with the steel wool for strength and sorry it's not going to do it for me today and just rub over like that you're taking it off anything excess that you don't need wood only will soak up what it needs and as I said that's a great thing about true oil it's not at all um you don't pull it like say with danish oil which my grandfather used now now just rub it over quickly like that if you feel that it's starting to get sticky or tacky, um, that's basically the oil sticking on the, the paper towel reacting to the oil that's on the guitar. Flip it over, because it was just starting to tack up a little bit there for me. You probably can't hear it, but you do have a different swiping thing. And just swipe like that. Okay. Now, I am not exactly 100% accurate on this thing, so I just pick it up and make sure with a quick rub around the edges that I haven't got any drips on the side because, yeah, you want it to be as thin as possible and the drips just don't look that nice. And there we go. That is my first coat on the front of that guitar. Um, I've seen people use cotton balls to put the true oil on there. I find that's not a great thing for me because basically I find the actual um, lint from the cotton ball sticks in there when it starts getting a bit sticky. But again, try it on a scrap piece of wood until you find out what works well for you. Now, 
I leave that for 24 hours. The bottle says two, but maybe because it's Australian humidity or something like that, two hours is not enough for it to dry. Once it's dry, I grab steel wool, either the real stuff, the four zeros steel wool, or the synthetic. I prefer the synthetic because I find the real steel wool will leave all the steel filings in the finish. Once it's dried, give it a quick wipe over. I wouldn't even call it a sand or a scuff up. It's just a really, really light rub. That'll take out any lumps or any imperfections out of the wood. Anyway, that is basically how easy it is, guys. Um, you can dye it to make it different colors. You can do a lot of things. I wanted this, because this is Karina, as like the Flying Bees and the Explorers from Gibson. So I wanted a nice natural flush to show that as a little bit of a thing. So I did not dye it, I just put it straight on there. Again, this is my first build, so probably not the best example, but hey, it's something to show. Anyway guys, um, I'm gonna sign off from there, and I'm just gonna do the internal cavity parts for it now. Other than that, um, thanks for watching, and hopefully this helps you out. Uh, any questions, post them up and I will try to respond. Thank you.